Welcome to CU TV News Radio, where our hosts Doug Llewellyn and Jim Masters talk to today's top thinkers from all around the world to bring you information, inspiration, and thought-provoking ideas that you can put to use in your personal or professional life right now. Covering a broad range of topics, we dig deep to discover what makes today's top thinkers tick. CU TV News Radio. It's the show where ideas matter. And now, here's today's host, Doug Llewellyn. Uh, hi, everybody. We welcome you back to CUTV News Radio. Indeed, we're happy because Dr. Joy Kong is back with us again today. She's in the midst of doing a series of broadcasts with us. Uh, as you know, she's a physician, but, you know, if you listen to her, you're going to notice she has an intense focus and fashion uh, like a motivational speaker, which she is. And when it comes to the subject of regenerative medicine, which is what we're going to be talking about, and stem cell therapies, she is a really gifted lecturer and a fierce advocate. Uh, she's going to continue to tell us more about stem cell therapy on these broadcasts and how regenerative, you know, that's a tough word, regenerative medicine <laughs> works overall, and share some case histories and testimonials with us. And uh, her goal, quite frankly, is to arm you, the listeners, with the kind of knowledge that once only doctors had. And uh, she's going to relate with us her struggle to come here to America, her medical education, her experiences. Uh, by the way, she is uh, finishing the touches to her memoir, Tiger of Beijing. Uh, you'll probably notice many of the symbolic qualities of the tiger in this masterful lady because she fears nothing and demonstrates great strength. She's lithe and beautiful, and uh, it's a great pleasure to have her back with us today. So, Dr. Joy Kong. Dr. Kong, welcome. How are you today? I'm doing fabulous. Thank you so much, Doug. I love it when you say fabulous. You know, I love people who say fabulous. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's really great. To be. Most people say, oh, I'm doing fine. I'm okay. But fabulous, you, you don't get much better than that. No, Let's talk about some enough. of the... <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about key things to remember today. You've been going through a lot of you know, information which you've been giving, uh, giving us and our audience, and I'm sure many of the same folks are listening. We might have some new folks who are listening today. Anyway, talk to us a little bit about separating some of the facts and myths when it comes down to stem cell therapy. A lot of people really aren't familiar with this at all. Uh, others who've heard you are, are by now. But anyway, let's talk about some of the facts and myths. How do you, what do you have to say about that subject? Because it's fascinating. Okay. The, the myths are, are quite a few. So first, the first myth is that people think that they have to get stem cell therapy by going overseas, that they thought stem cell therapy is not legal in the U.S. So that kind of came about because the Bush um, era, uh, that uh, particular, um, I guess, policy that uh, struck down stem cell, embryonic stem cell research in the sense that they could not use any more embryos they could still conduct existing research you know on the embryos that they were already you know they they, 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 they utilized but so right. so because of that ban a lot of people think that the u.s is very much against stem cells or somehow is not available so they thought and till this day a lot of people are still going overseas thinking that's the only way to get stem cell therapy so that's myth one and myth two is that people think that the way stem cells work is by going into your body and the, when, it, when they're injected into a particular site, um, then the cells will, will, will start to reproduce and, and differentiate and become that part of the body. Uh, or if they're given IV, the cells will go, in, go through the bloodstream and find their way into a particular organ and start dividing and differentiating, become part of the tissue. So that's what, how people think stem cells work. And that is just not true. Um, maybe possibly, you know, a few percentage of cells may do that, but the vast majority of the effect, you know, over the last 10, 15 years of research, it's pretty much well established that the cells work by sending out signals to your body. So either through the bloodstream or in the local tissue. So it will start sending out these um, growth factors, cytokines, so these molecules, and you know they just send out these exosomes. And these these signals will tell the body, okay, I need these type of stem cells to come over, or these type of cells to come over here, this kind of um, uh, immune cells to help 
you know, eat up the damaged cells or let, let me send out signals, you know, signals were to calm the inflammation so the cells will respond properly at the, to continue the inflamed, con, uh, to uh, discontinue the inflamed condition so the repair can actually take place. Um, and then they also talk with the local stem cells. So there are local stem cells that are on the pathway to become local tissue. But a lot of times during inflammation or disease, they're, 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 they're not really doing anything. They're, they're not woken up. So they're sitting there not doing much. And these stem cell therapy, or you can call it cell therapy, because it's more than just stem cells that's put in the body. All these cells have the total effect of waking up local regenerative ability. So that's, it, it's really through these signals that these cells help your body repair. Um, that's one reason that the, the most important cell that we've been looking at, you know, for the past many years is mesenchymal stem cells. Everybody talks about MSCs, MSCs, so that's mesenchymal stem cells. And actually the doctor that uh, discovered mesenchymal stem cells, Dr. Arnold Kaplan, proposed to re rename these cells as medicinal signaling cells because really that's the vast majority of their function. That's what they're doing in the body. So that's a huge misconception uh, by, the, by the public, thinking that the cells, you know, still have to go in and divide and become part of your body. And then the last misconception I want to talk about is that people think more is better. Um, so they will go overseas. They will find a place um, that, has, uh, that says, we'll give you a vast number of cells. We'll give you 200 million cells. You know, 100 million will give you, you know, even more. Um, because people think, well, I need that much more. Um, okay, you have to look at the source of the cells. How did these places achieve this vast number of cells? They achieve it by growing the cells in culture. So by growing cells in culture, the cells don't always divide into two identical stem cells. They most of the time actually divide into one stem cell and one daughter cell. So it, it's it's difficult to know what kind of technology this clinic has and have it verified how much stem cells is actually in your large number of cells that you said you're getting that are all stem cells because it's not possible they're all stem cells. So when the cells start to divide and you think you're giving them uh, this vast number and they all came from the same cells, unfortunately, the potency of the cells decline. Uh, this has been demonstrated by you know, a research study when they compared uh, the ex expanded cells versus native cells. So native is cells that have never been grown in culture. You know, they were taken out of the, the original, uh, uh, you know, tissue, and they're given back that way. Uh, but when you start expanding it, you do lose a lot of the potency. So that's another thing people don't realize. They think more is better. Uh, more is not better. And you also have to look at what you're getting because people think, oh, yeah, I'm getting this from umbilical cord blood or from bone marrow. Um, the percentage of mesenchymal stem cells is very low. And for bone marrow, when you age, the more you age, the percentage of your stem cells drops drastically. So if you're getting it from, uh, from cord blood, then the, the percentage of mesenchymal stem cells, cells it, it's very low. It's well below 1%. So, so you're getting a lot of other cells, but not quite the stem cells that we're after. Uh, whereas if you get cells, if you get it from umbilical cord tissue, you know, over 20% of the cells will be mesenchymal stem cells. So there's vast difference. And people don't realize these differences. They think all cells are cells, you know, or the more the better. So that's, that's you know, unfortunately, it's, you know, they, they become, you know, they, they, so the public fall into traps of, of rhetoric, you know, we're giving you a large number of cells and, and we're giving you, you know, this large number, of, let's say, from core blood, but it may not have very many mesenchymal stem cells. So people are, people bought into the numbers game. Um, that's something I think really needs to be addressed. That's really fascinating. That's very interesting indeed. Um, it's interesting you say most people think they have to go abroad, they have to go out of the country. That really isn't true, is it? They don't have to. No, they don't. No, they don't. Um, it, you know, we, I, I founded um, Chara Biologics, and we provide stem cell products to doctors throughout the country. Um, so these are um, under FDA particular category 
um, of, of Section 361, and they're considered uh, tissue transplants. So they're not considered a drug. So doctors can use these products if it's for the same function as when, you know, how the cells were in the body. So it's called homologous use. So as long as you do that, it doesn't even have to go through the drug application process. But that's why there are a lot of uh, tissue banks and a lot of companies selling these products legally in the U.S. And doctors can buy it legally and give patients, <laughs> give it to patients legally. So, yeah, people are not aware of this. Yeah. You know, I know you, you, you point out you guys are the, the, the future of medicine, as, as you put it. You help regenerate your body. Uh, but you, why do you think some doctors are against regenerative medicine therapies? What, what, why would they not be in favor of this? How do you feel about that? Uh, yes. Uh, part of me is puzzled and saddened by it. Um, but we're facing, we're, we're facing human nature. First of all, we're facing human nature who resists change. And we're facing huge economical, uh, you know, this, this balance that tilts towards the pharmaceutical companies. So there's a lot of economic gains at stake. Um, so, so first of all, when we were in medical school, we received almost no education on stem cells. Maybe mentioned in passing, you know, there are stem cells in the body. So we don't really know anything about it. And no one told us about it um, during residency either, because when you go into residency, you go into a special, you go into specialty, and that specialty has been well established, and a lot of times by the existing drugs. Um, and frankly, a lot of medical schools are funded um, by by people in the drug industry or even FDA, as we found out now. Um, so, so there's an existing framework of of, um, of using these drugs as the foundation of therapy for everything, right? So, so when doctors go into this framework, um, when they receive their residency training, they, they, no one tells them about stem cells. Why? Because that's that's not part of the framework. So they keep learning what has been passed down, and then when they go to conferences where they're supposed to learn the latest and greatest. That's also contributed, you know, controlled by the pharmaceutical industry. That's, you know, they're the ones that's sponsoring these conferences. And that, those will be the booths that they go to, and they will be convinced that these are, the, you know, the best therapies there is. So there's really, in a way, because I've been in that world. Um, I call it the bubble. I was in a bubble in my own specialty. Um, because when people told me about stem cells, using stem cells to help people, my, my response was, they're actually using stem cells in patients? I, I thought it was still in research stage. That's how ignorant I was, and that was, um, that, that was over three years ago. So, <laughs> I mean, over three years ago, there's a lot, of, a lot of stem cell therapy going on, but I was in my bubble, like 95% of the doctors. So that's one, yeah, one big thing. And then also, you know, I, I think when people are comfortable with what they're doing, it takes extra effort to learn something new. Um, it's just, uh, you know, it's like, um, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to jump, you have to put, put your energy into it. And they're already so busy with what they're doing. Um, they don't really feel that they have the energy to, to embark on a whole new arena. So, so then medicine teaches them to be very skeptical of everything out there, especially anything new, anything alternative in their in point of view. Um, so they reject a lot of these, um, new things. All right until proven otherwise. So they assume it's all hype or it doesn't work as it, you know, until it's proven otherwise. And then I hear from, this doc, from doctors a lot, well, they still don't have any proof that, that these therapies actually work, you know, are, that there, there hasn't been much proof. I said, come take my training. You're going to get over 280 articles just in your, in your flash drive. You know, I'm going to give you the proof because there's so much research going on worldwide and you just have to look. Just because you haven't looked doesn't mean the proof is not there. So, so those are the main reasons, I think. You know, a lot of people may wonder, because you, you really, you're so knowledgeable on this subject, uh, and you've, you've seen remarkable results, I know, and transformations in, in your own practice, the patients that you treat. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background, how you, how you became so knowledgeable on this subject of stem cell therapy. Um, where did it begin? Uh, well, I, I think it's 
driven by just needing to, to, to understand because, I, first of all, it, it, it's very fascinating, right? We all came from a stem cell. And how did the stem cell know to become a person? I mean, that, that is one of the biggest mysteries. I, you know, we don't know yet. We're trying to figure out piece, you know, bit by bit um, and trying to, to, to understand how these cells have that vast amount of intelligence in them and knowing exactly you know, what cells to to, to divide into and what to differentiate into and where to migrate to. And, and, and so, um, so the idea of these cells continuing having these intelligence in them and being able to form life, um, that, that was enough to get me very excited. And, and then I realized, um, you know, there's not, there, there's no books to read. You know, I wanted, I, I wanted to understand it deeply. And, you know, I don't want to just know the surface and, you know, saying these are great, you know, these cells are, can do all these things, but without really understanding the, the, the foundation. So um, because there are no books, because it's so new, you know, the way I had to learn was just going online and look at different articles and scientific studies. So I just read and read and read and read. I just, uh, I couldn't stop because I realized there's so much out there and I had to have it in my head. I had to have a, a clear picture in my head so I know what I'm giving patients. And because I want to explain to patients too, but I have to understand, you know, really in a, in a, in a deep level so I, I can put in a, in, in a framework that they can understand. Um, so that's really what's driving behind this is just me, I think just being responsible, being a responsible practitioner. A practitioner that you need to know what you're doing, right? I'm giving people therapy, but why would this therapy work? How do these cells work? You know, how do they know? And, and, and what do we know about these cells? I'm putting these cells in people's body. I need to know what these cells can do and how they work. So it's really from that need to, to be responsible that I just kept reading and kept learning. Um, and, uh, and really, I mean, I spent so much time just sitting on my couch and just read night after night. Um, so when other people are having fun, I'm just reading these articles because I'm having fun too. <laughs> so that's, well, it, that's, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's interesting, as you point out, most doctors don't get this kind of, and you didn't get this, uh, kind of training when you, I mean, you're a graduate, uh, you know, a super, uh, super graduate from the UCLA School of Medicine. You're triple board certified uh, as a physician in the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology by the American Board of Addictive Medicine and also the American Board of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine. I mean, you know, you've, you've had excellent, superb training, but obviously you didn't get that at, uh, during your school years. You, you've done this on your own research. You really have dug into this. Exactly. Right. So it's not taught. I, I'm sure one day it will become a specialty, and I, I, I hope it comes soon. But, uh, but we're far from that point. So all the doctors who are trying to do this are trying to figure things out on their own. So they would try to take maybe classes and, and, and uh, seminars. Um, so I saw a, a really quite a, a lacking in the educational part of stem cell therapy because you know you know some some conferences talk a lot about the science and you know they're very detailed in in the you know the the the, the more academic aspect but I'm very interested in helping people I want to know exactly what this can do, do for people with this kind of condition with that kind of condition what would these cells do what would be the best dose and how should I give it and that's where I think there's it's a, they're still lacking in education. That's why I founded the Academy of Integrative Cell Therapy, where I can put this all together, you know, kind of like give all the doctors what I found out because it took a lot. It took a lot to get all the pieces together and, and, and give them the evidence and put together a sound and effective protocol so they can use and, and, and so they can really achieve success with patients. Um, so, so that's, um, yeah, I'm trying to, to fill the void there, and, um, <laughs> um, but uh, it, it takes motivated doctors to want to take the course and, and you know, go, go that step further. Talk to me a little bit about the conditions um, that, are, that you think are, are really best used by this kind of therapy, uh, the ones, you know, that, that you use in, when you're treating patients. What, yeah. what brings them to well, you? What are they all, suffering from? Well, so first of all, 
you know, neither, uh, you know, anyone that's providing a stem cell product or a practitioner can make any claims, right? So let's just get that out of the way. No one can make claims that these cells can treat anything because, uh, because we don't have FDA indication, haven't gone through the drug approval process. So that's very important. I never make claims, and it's important that doctors don't make claims um, because they haven't gone through the process. But it's, that doesn't mean the, the evidence is not out there. So I focus on evidence. I focus on what conditions have gone through the most uh, research and what the cell therapy has shown the most promise in. So I would say, you know, uh, frankly, I tell people, you know, people ask me, what would the cell therapy be good for? I said, if you have any condition that has inflammation as the basis of the condition, um, so inflammation comes in either in injury, you know, or a chronic disease, right? Any kind of, or even aging. Inflammation is a big contributor to aging. So any of these issues, um, when the inflammation is involved, the stem cells have a huge capacity to calm inflammation. So the mesenchymal stem cells, MSCs, are tremendous in calming inflammation. So, so which conditions are, are really good? Um, for example, osteoarthritis, right? People with osteoarthritis, they, it's a chronic inflammatory condition. People think it's wear and tear. No. When you, no matter how much you wear and tear it when you were young, your body repairs it right away. But when you're older, the repair doesn't catch up. So it cannot repair anymore. So then you have degradation of the tissue, of the cartilage. So, 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 the, so the cell therapy can be very helpful in calming the inflammation and wake up the regenerative potential of the body. So definitely I've seen it in all kinds of, you know, soft tissue, you know, tissue care or, or joint issues, uh, you know, great success, you know, plenty of evidence. And then the other condition, the, the other type of condition that's really helpful is autoimmune diseases, uh, which are, are very prevalent these days. I think a lot has to do with the modern world, with the, the toxic, um, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, substance that get, get into our body. Um, so, so these autoimmune diseases are very, very difficult to treat. Um, they are, they are very tough, and they can present in all kinds of strange ways. And you know, the presentation is can be very puzzling, but it's basically an immune imbalance uh, leading to all kinds of, you know, symptoms from head to toe. So, so the cell therapy. And what's cool about these cell therapy is that it has this holistic effect because it balances your immune system. So there's a huge immune modulating effect where these autoimmune disease uh, patients have over, over exaggeration of the inflammatory um, aspect of their immune system. So, so you know, it's like a, it, it, the two should be in balance. Then your body will have enough inflammation to generate the repair process. And then enough anti-inflammation so your body can, so that the, the, the location, the tissue can calm down so you can rebuild. So the two need to be in balance. Both are important. So how do you balance them? And these cells are superb at leading to that kind of balance. So they, they've shown that they can change the person's uh, immune system from the inflammation dominant system, a, 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 a kind of picture to uh, to more anti-inflammatory kind of picture because, you know, the, they, the, the shift has to happen. So, um, so then autoimmune diseases, you know, we've known that there, there are, I think, uh, over 120 autoimmune diseases, uh, diseases wow. very, very prevalent. Um, you know, like, you know, conditions like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, uh, even diabetes, you know, second um, – uh, the, the type 2 diabetes, and that has a lot of autoimmune components. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a huge, huge issue. Um, so, so, so definitely, the, those two, I think, will be the most prominent. But frankly, like I said, in all the conditions um, that has an inflammation as a you know, basis for the disease, then it, it should be very helpful. Well, you know, it's interesting. You have a really interesting uh, website, uh, and I want to ask you about something on your website, but it's Chara Biologics. Um, let me spell it for you. It's C-H-A-R-A Biologics.com. C-H-A-R-A Chara Biologics.com. If anybody listening goes there, they can see 
well, they'll learn all about what you do, um, the kind of medicine, you know, and, and these various things that are listed. I mean, the list runs from alcoholism all the way to uh, to strokes, type 2 diabetes, asthma, that potentially this this kind of treatment can really help. You you work with patients so much, uh, you see you see the effects, and it it really is kind of remarkable as far as you're concerned. I know uh, that this really can be very very helpful. Um, and you have people come to you from all over the country, don't you? They come in to see yeah. you in your your and Chatsworth, all over the world, California, <laughs> yes. all over the world. Yeah. Yes. Let me ask you one other thing that may be uh, obviously of interest. Uh, you know, some people may wonder, does insurance cover this kind of treatment, or do they frown on it? Unfortunately, no. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I think we're going to get there. Um, you know, we're definitely going to get there because the insurance companies will, will realize how much money they're going to save in the long run by keeping people healthy or giving them a therapy that's very, you know, very holistic and, and non-invasive and doesn't, you know, doesn't cause further problems um, right. and, and it can help them avoid many, many surgeries and many of these long-term care, which, you know, is the vast majority of the health care costs and later, you know, when people are getting older. Um, so so they, they, they will realize, you know, that they, they, will, they, they will, you know, look at their pocketbook and realize that they need to cover it, but uh, not at this point yet. You know, I, I think society is slow to embrace new things and you know you know they, they don't understand it so they don't really know what to do with it um that i don't think there's a clear um because there hasn't been a clear indication except for using cord blood um to reconstitute the immune system after uh someone get their you know bone marrow completely ablated you know wiped out yeah. um that's the only uh indication you know to 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 rebuild your immune system uh, in those mostly cancer situations but otherwise other than that there's no formal fda indication so so they are in that model that you know the drug model that that you know they want the fda to have a clear indication before they cover i think that's that's where uh, where it's at Okay. I also want to point out that on your website you have uh you have a set of videos, a very good set of videos on the website. The videos talk briefly, we have about a minute left about what some of the topics are and why it's so advantageous to uh, to have them on your website and available to see. Tell me about them. Yeah, I wanted the public to really understand how stem cell First of all, what 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 is a stem cell? You know, that, and and then how do they work? Um, what can it do for, for, for people who want to use it for anti-aging purposes? Like, how do you maintain your use, uh, possibly using stem cells? So I wanted to educate them. And then I also have lectures that's more tailored toward doctors, but it's very informative with lots of studies to, 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 to demonstrate, you know, the, the, the various, you know, nuances of between different cells. And, um, and, and yeah, so mainly I want to, I'm, I'm kind of an educator at heart. I want to educate the public and I want to educate doctors. I want everyone to do it right. <laughs> well, that's so great. I think it's really good. Glad for you to have pointed that out. Well, look, we've run out of time, Dr. Kong. Uh, it's really great to have you here. I know that uh, this has been a very informative series of broadcasts you've been doing with us here on CUTV News Radio. I want to thank you for taking the time to, to do it. And to remind everybody that your website is Chara, C-H-A-R-A, Biologics, charabiologics.com. Um, and by the way, you're located out in Chatsworth, California. That's, uh, that's a suburb of Los Angeles, actually part of Los yeah, Angeles. This is greater, um, yeah, greater LA area. In the greater area. Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate it. We're out of time. Dr. Kong, take care, and thank you for your time. And that'll do it for this edition of CUTV News Radio, everybody. Hope you uh, learned something from this because she's really into something very, very interesting. And really, she does a lot of good for a lot of people. So visit the website. You've been listening to CUTV News Radio. If you want to learn more about our programming or perhaps be considered for a future show, visit us on the web at www.cutvnews.com. And if you enjoyed listening to today's show, 
Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher and be sure to write a review. Thanks for listening. And from all of us at CUTV News Radio, we hope you have a productive and inspired day. That'll do it for this edition, everybody. I'm Doug Llewellyn. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Take care of yourself. Have a great day. Bye for now.